Good morning, and welcome to Smash Fun and Coffee with Carol and Angela. Hi, Carol. How are you? Good morning, Angela. I'm great. A little chilly. Do you know that this morning it was 66 degrees? And for know, people who so don't excited. live in Southern California, they may not understand the impact of that. <laughs> there was actually a chill in the air. I know. <laughs> it was it's awesome. really nice. It is nice. It is nice. Oh, well, I am so excited to be on this call with you this morning. And I know that um, we have a really special guest, and I'd love for you to introduce her. Our special guest this morning is um, Ronnie Rosen. And Ronnie owns a company called The Move Managers. And her tagline is Downsizing with Dignity. It's an amazing approach to helping people with a very special need. And I'm going to have Ronnie explain that. So, Ronnie, good morning. Good morning, ladies. How are you? We are fine. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Oh, I'm delighted to be invited. Thank you. (laughs) This is so exciting. Ronnie, um, what are the main reasons for someone to hire the move manager? That's a really good question, and that's a question my clients ask themselves all the time after talking with me. You know, what do you bring to the table? Moving for anybody at any age is traumatic. It's one of the top five stressors in life. And it doesn't matter how old you are. It's hard. It's very emotional. Forget the physical. It's emotionally difficult. Um, When when I have a senior who has illness or disabilities or just old age and they can't do it themselves, they find they're going from their home that they've lived in for 20, 30, 40 years, and they're moving to an adult community, for instance. They're moving from somewhere around 2,500 square feet into 900 square feet. You cannot put two cups of water in the one cup bottle. doesn't work. (laughs) (laughs) And then they look look around and they say, well, what am I going to do? And that's where I come in. I I go in, I measure the place they're going to, I measure the furniture they want to take. And then I show them a floor plan that, yes, you can take this couch with you, but you won't have anywhere to walk. When they (laughs) see it that way, it has an impact. And we walk around and we look at things and we figure out what is going to fit, how they are going to best fill this space with items that they love. Once that's been determined, um, then there's the agonizing process of what do I do with the stuff I'm not taking? And that's where I can help them decide, do they have family that they want to give it to? Do they have friends they'd like to give some of their knickknacks to, some remembrance of? Anything else is either a donation or they can sell it, and I can facilitate that. I can facilitate where they want to donate it to, and I make sure that everything gets packed up and arrives to its destination safely. I make sure that all the belongings they're taking with them get packed up and they get there safely so that at the other end, when everything's unpacked, yes, it's smaller, but it's familiar that all the things that they love are around them and they feel like it's home. It's not the home they left, but it's comfy and it's homey. And this makes them happy. I know you've had some challenges with people. I mean, what you're describing is absolutely true and important, but I know that you have such a unique approach to helping them because it's not easy to make those decisions. No, it's not. It's very emotional. Even when there's an adult child around, it's hard for an adult child, and again, age is irrelevant. They could be anywhere from 20 to 60. Parents are anywhere from 40 to 80. Mm -hmm. So an adult child of, let's just say, 50 years old, going into their parents' house and realizing that the home they grew up in, everything that they love, is now trash. It's not something you can sell. It's not an antique, but there's no use for it, and nobody wants it, and that's very, very hard. So you when really I don't navigate that process because it, it is a difficult one. It's very difficult, and I try to explain 
what's going on and why they're in this situation and what the best way to handle it is. And there are, there are lots of ways of making somebody understand that, yes, the bedroom set that they grew up with from when they were five years old until they left for college <laughs> is just not something, that, while they love it, nobody else is going to pay a lot of money for it. And that's a really hard concept for, for anybody. So I work with them and try to get them to understand the situation and get them to understand that if they donate this bedroom set this for you know a 10-year-old girl, for instance, while they can't sell it and get a lot of money, they can donate it. And some family that doesn't have a lot of money, some little girl is going to get to enjoy it the way they did. And that puts a different feeling to it. They're not just getting rid of it. They know that somewhere down the line, somebody else is going to love it the way they did. And that makes it much easier to let go. It's made it easier for me to let go of things. <laughs> That's absolutely <laughs> true. I'm having a little bit of anxiety just thinking about my garage right now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, Ronnie, no. she'll navigate you through it. <laughs> so I'm getting the feeling that you're more like a moving life coach. Uh, I, I have many hats. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about your services then. Let me, my, let me tell you about one of my very first clients. She's a lovely, lovely lady. She had been living in, um, in Malibu. Uh, I'm sorry, in Santa Monica, in, in, in HUD housing for a long time. She had no family. She had no money. She was living on Social Security, and it was a pittance. She was also something of a hoarder, lovely, lovely lady. She had been a painter. And she had been on the waiting list for an assisted living place, a specific uh, assisted living home that she wanted to go to that would take her and for only her social security. She didn't need any other money. Somewhere, she got, uh, fell into the cracks. She was, had been waiting for eight years to oh get in gosh. here. It, it was pathetic, it really was. Um, and we went in and she was very excited, but she was also very hard because as a painter, she had kept, I think, everything that she had ever painted that hadn't been sold or given. <laughs> Having and, been an uh, art teacher, I guess that I'm really shaking I, right now. <laughs> I could just say I, I can relate to that because half of my garage is art supplies. So now we have to get rid of this stuff because she's going into one room and actually a half a room in assisted living because she was going to be sharing. Um, a friend of hers, I, I guess it was a childhood friend of hers that was out of state had called me and said, get her moved. Send me the bill. I don't care what it costs. You know, just, you just hear get that, her moved. Angela? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, be later. nice to your, be good to your friends. You need them yeah, when you get older friend. to your friends. <laughs> and we got her moved. We, we got her to give some of her paintings to, to friends. And she was happy about that because her friends appreciated, oh, I'm sorry. Her friends appreciated having them because they were beautiful. And she felt good because she knew they were going to be appreciated. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it we just donated. Um, again, letting her know that her artwork is going to be accessible to more people. And that made her feel good. We did take maybe a dozen pieces that we were able to hang in her new place. So she enjoyed that. When we finally got her moved, she looked around her and she's sitting down in her wheelchair and she actually clapped her hands. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Sorry, I still cry when I see this story. She was so happy to be in this clean apartment or space where she had room to walk. Right. And she knew there were people around to take care of her. Right. And it, she, she lived another three and a half years there, and she was so happy. She had friends. She had people she could talk to. There were activities, and while she couldn't participate in a lot of them because of her health, there were a lot she could do. There were discussions, and she was a very, very 
bright woman, um, very aware of the world and what was going on. So to have people I around the I remember church. that lady, and I remember you visiting her. You really took such care of her. And I even went with you to visit her. You did. You did. <laughs> she loved, she, her, one of her biggest passions, or vices as she called them, was dark chocolate. So to visit her, just to take her a bar of the darkest chocolate you could find, she would be thrilled. <laughs> it's a whole week. Oh. Well, so, just that service alone, Ronnie, just bringing me the chocolate, I think I probably would hire you. <laughs> <laughs> but I know but in addition to that, you've got so many resources. I mean, you have an amazing Rolodex of resources. Could you just let us know about some of those? For my clients and, my, and the children of my clients who are frequently the person that actually does the hiring, it doesn't matter who hires me, my client is the person who is moving. It's their wishes, it's their needs and their desires that come first. So I, I never override what they want if it's not in their best interest because the child thinks it's easier. But I do have resources. I, I have attorneys that can help them with um, all the paperwork that's involved in transferring authority and getting them what they need to be able to handle the finances of the parent. I have medical people who can help in the interim with, when they're not moving to help get them somebody to come in and bring them dinners and take them, take them shopping and do whatever it is they need. Um, whatever and you it, also what, have, um, you don't actually, have, you're not a moving company per se, mm-hmm. but you I'm do not a have company. movers in your Rolodex that you, I have, you use. I do. I have, I have movers and I work with a couple of movers more than others because I know they're their crews and the guys that come in are they're so great they're so respectful of the, of my client of their possessions they're so careful I've not yet knocking on wood here had anything serious break right? um, and these people are great my resources for getting rid of things for selling things for whatever it is that they need whatever is involved in getting them from one place to another in a timely manner in a safe manner and on budget that's what i do wow so ronnie you know really because like you're in- low i'm sorry angela just had a thought really quick but because you're in southern california um what happens when people are outside of your immediate area are you able to help them in some way absolutely i belong to the national association of senior move managers we are just under a thousand members strong across the country with a couple in australia and a couple in great britain at the moment Hmm. if a client is here and moving out of the area out of my geographic area whether it's to san francisco new york or switzerland I can get them moved. That is not a problem. That's I get great. them everything packed. I get them packed up. I get the movers, and I call. <clears throat> I call on an associate in the destination city or state to meet the truck and get them unpacked and set up at the other end. So there's always somebody that I know is going to take care of my client, and do basically what I would do. Right. So from start to finish, you've got them covered. Yes. And I frequently, I'm at the other end. I'm at the receiving end. Somebody else will pack them up and get them here, and I'll meet the truck and set everything up. In that case, I will have the move manager at the origin send me pictures of how how their rooms are set up. If they have have a bunch of knickknacks and bookcases, So I, had to pick, you I, know, a picture of, I get a picture of it so I can set it up exactly the way it was in their home. Hmm. Again, they come in and they know all their pieces are there, but they don't have to start searching for it because they know this is on this shelf, this is on that shelf, it's all there, it's all good. I'm happy. Well, I've learned from experience that uh, the need to downsize can happen very suddenly without warning. 
And I'd encourage everyone to have Ronnie's number on file in their address book, uh, under the mattress, wherever you keep important phone numbers. <laughs> Make sure you have this one. Well, thank you, AFG. And yes, frequently it does. A doctor will say to a family member, you know, I can't release your mother to, to live on her own anymore. She has to go into an assisted living or an adult community. And that has to happen in a couple of days. And we can do that. And what I do in that instance is we go into the house and take the most important things. And then we go back afterwards, after she's all moved and settled in, and clean up the rest of it and get the house, get rid of everything, give it away, sell it, whatever, and get the house ready for the realtor to put on the market. So, Ronnie, well, what, what brings you that to – Angela, I'm sorry. Go ahead. One at a time, please. I was just going to ask, what's the main reason for you to be crowdfunding on Smash Fund? What do you hope to achieve there? Every once in a while, I end up with a client or a potential client that has nobody around and has no money. And that's such a tough position to be in. The last time it happened, I had, I had a lady moving from one assisted living to another. And there happened to be another woman who was in the same assisted living, going to the same assisted living. Second woman had very, very little. She had maybe six boxes of things, and that was it. Clothing, toiletries. So we just tacked her onto the other ones. It was no big deal to take a bed and six boxes on top of everything else. It didn't cost the first client any more money, and we got to move her. But if I didn't have that, I'm, a, I'm happy to donate my time, but I can't donate a mover's time. I can't right. donate the time for somebody to come and take apart or put back together electronics or anything that's, you know, specialized. Right. Or clean, yeah, or clean out the old and, place. And, yeah. mm-hmm. I, I, I can't donate their right. time for them. Um, I would like to have a fund available so that I can take some pro bono cases during the year and be able to pay the mover and pay the, all of the ancillary people that I need and just donate my time. That's fantastic. That's, that's that. my goal. Yeah, I love that. I think that's great. Me too, absolutely. I think it's definitely a worthy cause. So um, if you're listening and you'd like to donate to Ronnie's project, it is on smashfund.com and search Downsizing with Dignity. Uh, it's a really good, a, a really good resource, a really good place to uh, to uh, make a donation if if you're so inclined. If you're interested in being our guest on Smash Fun and Coffee with Carol and Angela, you could email us at ismashfund at gmail dot com. That's ismashfund at gmail dot com. Ronnie, this has been fantastic and very insightful and informative, and it's giving me a little bit of uh, a reason to look around my house and say, oh, what do I really need to get rid of before this becomes <laughs> the heartache of my children? <laughs> well, I thank you both for the opportunity to share what I do and my feelings about what I do. Um, thank you very, very much for inviting me. Uh, our well, pleasure, Ronnie. Thank you. Yes. I can tell you're really passionate about that, and I love working with passionate people, so thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.